بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم امين وبعد Imam Anawi rahimahullah ta'ala he titles this next chapter Babu Fadl al-Buka'i min khashyatillahi ta'ala wa shawqan ilayh Um he titles the chapter on the virtue of weeping out of fear from Allah and from the desire to want to be with him And so he's speaking here about the um this act of crying before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um crying um is an expression of immense emotion um when a person is immensely scared um they cry that that emotion is so overwhelming that it leads them to cry and to for them to feel the sense <coughs> of um of or of just the sense of of exa- extreme fear right where it dominates their thoughts and it's also debilitating like they they don't act it's so overwhelming um and then the other type of crying is crying from love um when you wish to be with someone and you love them so much um and so you cry from your desire to be with them and and sometimes we refer to that as happy tears right that you find the thing that you love so much that you start crying And so crying is um is of the most powerful ways um we express emotions. Um and so from our deen is that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of this in the Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu alaihi wasallam also in the Sunnah to show us that um the mu'minin are people who have gentle hearts. And their hearts are um connected to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and their hearts um are they shake and they cry from their love and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um and and that this is part of iman because iman isn't just to know who Allah is uh, he is la ilaha illallah or the name of Allah iman is what to feel that in your heart to have that love and to have that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah grant us this true iman mm-hmm. and so um imam anawi rahimahullah he speaks about this virtue of crying from the fear and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um qala Allah ta'ala wa yakhruna lil adqani wa yabkuna wa yaziduhum khushu'a and they fall down on their faces weeping and it and it increases their humility right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about these righteous people these salihin they they cry um they they fall down on their faces meaning that they're so overwhelmed by the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they fall down on their faces and then um yabkun and then they cry from the um this great emotion and haqiqa they have, they have reached and then wa yaziduhum khushu'a and it increases them in more humility because the more you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more humble you become right you realize that who are we before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his greatness and his uh his beauty subhanahu wa ta'ala his rahma how kind and how patient and how merciful he is how powerful he is how limited we are so when the believer he reflects or she reflects about the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rahma of Allah they it's overwhelming and so we ask Allah to grant us this understanding right not everybody has this knowledge right there is people have the knowledge but they don't have the realization subhanallah right there's two different things right having knowledge is one thing but to realize it as if it is real is a whole different thing right so a lot of us we have knowledge but the realization that we live with this as if it's the in front of us and we we live with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if we are, we are in front of him and we see the qudra of Allah and the rahma of Allah in everything when you reflect like that you see Allah's love and Allah's rahma and Allah's qudra in everything and so that humbles the heart because everything you see is calling Allah 
وَإِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ Everything is called on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the, what's, the, what's the issue? وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ You don't understand their tasbih. But every single being is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making tasbih of them. And so everything in existence is a reality reflecting the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the believer, when he reflects about the greatness of Allah and the rahmah of Allah, his heart trembles and his, height, his eyes his eyes weep. And so this is one of the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبْكُونَ Here in this ayah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemns the behavior of the disbelievers. And he says to them, and do you wonder at this recitation? Meaning, do you, are you amazed by this book? And what is your response? And you laugh at it and weep not. So the opposite of crying is laughing. So when something is not serious and something is a joke, you laugh at it. It's not, it's not something serious, right? And, and laughter, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned laughter. And the ulama, they also warned about excessive laughter because they say that when you laugh abundantly and everything is a joke, that shows that you, there's a lack of maturity. You can't tell between what's serious and what's not, right? And so the mushrikeen, they were so immature that they treated the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mockery, they would laugh. Right? And that is why in another ayah, Allah says that, uh, Like they were laughing, the munafiqeen, they were making mockery of Allah and the messenger and the ayah. Allah says, are you making fun of this? Is this a joke? Right. This is how ignorant and how immature you have become. You, you've, you've disbelieved. You're not believers anymore. Don't make excuses. So the opposite of, of crying is laughter. So there's these two uh, powerful ways we express emotion. Uh, crying is when there's serious attachment. We cry. Either out of fear or out of love. And we laugh when something is very trivial and entertaining, and, it, and then it causes us to laugh and it entertains us, we laugh. Now one of the issues is that our scholars first, first of all, they, in, the, in our tradition, we find that the Salaf said, uh, uh, you know, to minimize your laughter, don't laugh abundantly. It hardens the heart. It, it makes the mind immature. One of the issues of today in our modern culture, modern world, is that, you know, um, entertainment has become widespread and we have access to entertainment at the fingertips. We can laugh and we can joke and we can entertain ourselves. And, and the problem with that is too much entertainment corrupts the heart. Too much laughter corrupts the mind. And this is one of the issues we're dealing with with the younger generation. They're growing up with this. They don't know the difference between what is serious and what is a joke and when to be responsible and when to be, when to be relaxed. Everything is easy. Everything is, 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 you know, you can just take it easy, right? And so this, and it, it leads to subhanAllah immaturity. And that's what we see in our younger youth and generation. It takes people now a longer time to mature, right? Just a generation ago, you would see a 20 year old man mature enough to be the family. Today you see a 20 year old man his mind is maybe the mindset of a 13, 14 year old boy 20, 30 years ago. You say, oh, he's 20, but he still acts like he was, you know, a 13 year old, 12, maybe even a 10 year old boy from the time of our, of our parents, right? Or my parents, and, and some of you are much older than me, but you would see, and before them, youth before them were much more mature. At the age of 10, 11, 12, some of them would get married and would have family. And today at the age of 10, 11, 12, you know, these you feel like they're still like five, six year old, right? Still four or five. So the maturity level of, of, of the development of maturity in people has decreased. And this is because of the excessive laughter and joke, right? And so, and so the believer, um, he has to have this discipline where when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it isn't only knowledge, but it's haqiqah. And haqiqah is realization. It's to see the truth, right? You don't just know the truth, 
but you see the truth, you live the truth. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this, this haqiqah, this true iman. Allahumma ameen. And so uh, we go into the first hadith, or Imam, no, here is Shaykh Safir Rahman Mubarak Furi, he just quotes one hadith on this chapter. Um, and so we'll, we'll just take this single hadith. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا يلج النار رجل بكى من خشية الله تع من خشية من خشية الله حتى يعود اللبن في الضرع ولا يجتمع غبار في سبيل الله ودخان جهنم رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح so this hadith is narrated by Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, whose name is Abdurrahman ibn Sakhar al-Dawsi radiallahu anhu. He reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, one who weeps out of fear of Allah will not enter the hell till milk, till milk returns back in the udder. And what that means is that, you know, it's impossible. Once milk leaves the breast, it doesn't go back to it. And so the, the ayah, this, the Prophet was using this example to say like, once you cry from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fear, khalas, you have attained a level of iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made jahannam haram upon you. Because you have loved Allah so much, and you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much, that jahannam is haram upon you. It is impossible for that person to enter the hellfire. The way it's impossible for milk to return back to the breast after it comes out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this khashya, this type of crying from his fear and love subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the last, second part of the hadith, وَلَا يَجْتَمِعُ غُبَارٌ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَدُخَانُ جَهَنَّمُ And dust in the way of Allah, meaning a person uh, who goes out to fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where they sacrifice their self and wealth, um, the, the dust of, of a person traveling, and the dukhan, the smoke of hellfire, will not combine for one person. Meaning if you made a sacrifice where you traveled and you, you for the sake of Allah, peace be Allah in jihad, and you, you went through that fatigue and through that sweat and that dust and you became dirty and exhausted, that dust will protect you from the smoke of jihannam. Right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the azab. Um, and by by fault, by, by uh, and, and, and our scholars they always uh, you know speak also about fadlul ilm, also traveling for knowledge of the deen, and this so by this is another category which is a type of it was just a category of jihad is to be the last to seek knowledge, and so we want to uh, also pursue that where we travel for the sake of Allah to seek the knowledge of the dunya. Subhanallah, we find that as a, as a community. We, um, we highly emphasize the education of, you know, secular education. We spend countless time, money, tutoring programs, services, this, that, special schools, so that our kids can advance in their secular education, which is khair. But something we have to do is we also have to make sure that we teach our children to take time out of their life to seek the knowledge of this deen. Right? You find in Christian in in, a lot, in some of the Christian communities, they 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 have a year after high school where they send a lot of their youth in in into ministry work. They send them to you know to do their Christian dawa work. Yeah. So they travel and one year they spend just serving their religion and 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 so on. And some of them even they tell them once you can finish you you give a percentage of your regular income back to the church, right? And this is how like they engage them. So us as Muslimin. We have a greater duty to do this, right? So we teach our children that we have to take time out of the dunya, put the dunya on hold, travel for Allah, and we sponsor them, right? There are, alhamdulillah, there are boarding schools, there are universities, there are, uh, even here in the U.S., alhamdulillah, now every, every few years we hear new institutes opening up with home, with like that are residential, where students can live there and also seek Islamic knowledge and be in the company of scholars and deen. And so there's a type of investment we have to make. We tell that our children, one year feast of Allah, or even the summer. We take them summer break, we travel to, to scholars or to Islamic institutes, and we spend time where we really teach them to connect, their, to, to, de to develop their iman and to develop their character. And so going back to the hadith, whoever goes out in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Um, and they, and they, you know, they go as traveling is exhausting, right? You go through difficulty financially, physically, you sweat, you're physically tired. And so that fatigue and that dirt and that sweat that they experience will be a protection for them um, from the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the torment of Jahannam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us khashiyah. We ask mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us uh, increased iman. Mm -hmm. We ask Allah to make us among the khashi'een al baqina lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. We ask Allah to make us of those who are humble and in fear and in love of Allah. Who cry from the who cry from the fear and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, to grant us mercy, to make us steadfast upon our deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us steadfast upon this deen and to preserve and to make La ilaha illallah firm in their heart in our hearts and in the hearts of our progeny. We ask Allah to forgive us, our parents, our spouses and our children and all of the Muslimin, those who are alive and those who have passed. اللهم آمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والحمد لله رب العالمين